Coming up on Let's Play, Fijiana take on the champion of all fitness sessions. Held in single talk ascendants, uh, that's a hell of a training. <laughs> it's all about the struggles, trying to climb up those hills. <laughs> and a new Serevi makes their debut in the white and black of Fiji. My dad is Wesley Serevi. I know how good of a player he is, but at the same time, I'm also building my own legacy. With the domestic season drawing to a close, the top players from across Fiji will now embark on a two-month World Cup camp, spending precious time away from their families in the hope of being selected for the final World Cup squad. We are here to meet up at uh, 6.30 and uh, it's basically a start of a new training camp. So we got the message on the 29th of July. It gives everything about who has to come and what you have to wear and all that. It's gonna be a tough week, but people will uh, work together and go through this week together and everyone's gonna put every hard work in this week, so yeah, we'll be prepping good. Yo, Paco, down on the extra. Yo, Mbera, last chance. Down a few. To kickstart the camp, the players are put through fitness tests in 30 degree heat. Our session today. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I think I'm a little more nervous than excited. Vigena! Vigi! Fijiana's first World Cup game is against a record-holding England side with state-of-the-art strength and conditioning. It's down to the players and coaches to use what time they have to prepare for the biggest game of their lives. But their SNC coach, Sonaila Vitao, isn't holding his breath. Based on the fitness test, it was not so good, so I have to make them run. So in terms of uh, fitness, it's a bit late for us for the World Cup. After a month together as a squad, the coaches have arranged for the team to train in the proverbial birthplace of Fijian rugby, the Singatoka Sand Dunes. Singatoka Sand Dunes is where all the champions are made. Every team that wants to win a championship come in, um, have to complete the challenge here. Uh, I'm always nervous climbing up these mountains. It kind of feels like it's never ending. First of all, I have to be tough as a coach, as a Fijian. <laughs> it's mainly testing them to, to, have, to be mentally strong and physically strong and we have to conquer all those sand hill so that we test them uh, who can really want to go to the World Cup. I have to keep on telling them they are not the only players playing rugby. There are other better players. I will be looking for better players. Sometime it was I was just about to throw the towel. It's a hard journey. Or oh, where am I going to get these girls? With more opportunity in the women's game, Fijian nationals based overseas can now build a career in the white and black of Fiji. More talent means more competition for places. My name is Kolora uh, Rossi Lamani. I was born here in Fiji. I went to New Zealand when I was six years old and I currently live in New Zealand. Yeah, and I just joined the Fijiana um, draw until the Fijian 15s just now. 
My motivation to push myself um, is my family, um, especially knowing that they're not here with me. Um, I think waking up every morning, knowing that they're supporting me from far away, um, and yes, yeah, pretty much my family. In order for coach Siruvakula to find his future players, he had to look back. Few in the history of the game have built bigger dynasties on the rugby pitch than Fiji's Waisali Serevi. And look at this! A wonderful run in! And the man who makes so many things happen for Fiji. And in July 2022, another Serevi ran out in a Fijian jersey. My dad is Wesley Serevi. I know how good of a player he is, but at the same time, I'm also building my own legacy. Uh, my debut game with Fiji was against Samoa and Oceania uh, just this past week. It's a humbling experience and it's an honor. It's honestly such a huge blessing to be able to uh, wear the white um, and black jersey. I've played for USA for the past couple of years and it's nothing like that feeling of finally being able to be at home and represent uh, your family and friends and, and wear the white jersey and represent uh, Fiji. Rugby is referred to as a religion in Fiji. It's the heartbeat of every community as expression, faith and national pride combine to create sporting magic. With the scores tied and the clock in the red, it was instead resilience which helped this team claim the Oceania Trophy. To be able to win that final and just be able to come together as a team to pray and sing and giving the glory back to God um, is kind of like a, it's almost kind of like a relief. I'm already tearing up just even thinking about it. <laughs> For every woman or girl here in Fiji, we'd face a battle like the Singatoka Sand Dunes. Like every week we'd have a, a mountain to face. We'd uh, go through that struggle every day. I think that's what makes this women's rugby a success. But it's not yet a success because we still have to conquer World Cup. Such is the effect of the Singatoka Sand Dune. Even coach Vital has had a change of heart. The girls are ready. They're physically fit. Uh, we've been doing some hard yards in the field. We've been facing the sand dunes, Tonga uh, Mud Run. And uh, so right now, you can say they are, fit, they are fit to be playing the world. Next time on Let's Play, Fijiana go up against Canada in their final test before the Rugby World Cup. <laughs>